Heed thou assured good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Good madam, do. I warrant it grieves my husband as if the case were his. Oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bound to use, madam. Whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he's never anything but your true servant. I know it. I thank you. You do love my lord. You have known him long, and be you well assured. He shall in strangeness stand no farther off than in a polite distance. Hey, but lady, that policy may either last so long, or feed upon such nice and water's diet or breed itself so out of circumstance, that I being absent and my place supplied, my general will forget my love and service. Do not doubt that, before Emily here, I give thee warrant of thy place. Assure thee, if I do vow a friendship, I will perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll watch him tame and talk him out of patience. His bed shall seem a school, his board a shrift. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, be merry, Cassio, for thy solicitor shall rather die than give thy cause away. Madam, here comes my lord. Madam, I'll take my leave. Why stay and hear me speak? Madam, not now. I am very ill at ease, unfit for my own purpose. Well, do your discretion. Ha, I like not that. What dost thou say? Nothing, my lord, or if I know not what. Was that not Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord, uh, no, sure, I, I cannot think it, that you will steal away so guilty like seeing you come in. I do believe twas he. How now, my lord? I have been talking with the suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it, do you mean? Why, you are Lieutenant Cassio. Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, I have no judgment in an honest face. I prithee, call him back. Went he hence now? I so 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 humbled, that he hath left part of his grief with me, to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. But shall be shortly? The sooner, sweet, for you. Shall be tonight at supper? No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then? I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the citadel. Why, then, tomorrow night, Tuesday morn, or Tuesday noon, or night, on Wednesday morn? I prithee, name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith he is penitent, and yet has trespassed in our common reason. Say that, they say the wars must make examples out of their best, it is not almost a fault to incur a private check. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello, I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny or stand so murmuring on. What, Michael Cassio, that came owing with you so many a time when I have spoke of you dispraisingly, had taken your part, to have so much to do to bring him in. Trust me, I could do much. Oh, prithee, no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Why, this is not a boon? This I should treat you wear your gloves, or feed on nourishing dishes, or keep you warm, or sue to you to do a peculiar profit to your own person. Nay, when I have a suit with, with, wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall, it shall be full of um, poise and difficult weight, and fearful to be granted. I will deny thee nothing, wherein I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Amelia, come. Um, be as your fancies teach you. Where, whether I am obedient.
Excellent wretch, perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos has come again. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know if your love? He did, from first to last. Why dost thou ask? But for a satisfaction, ought my thought no further harm. Why of that thought, Iago? I did not think he'd been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed? Indeed, I indeed. Discerns thou aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest, I honest. My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Think, my lord. Think, my lord. Alas, thou echoest me as if there were some monster in thy thought too hideous to be shown. Dost thou mean something? I heard thee say even now thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. Why dost not like? And when I told thee he was of my counsel, of my whole course of wooing, thou criest, indeed, and didst contract and purse thy brow together as if thou hadst shut up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost. For I know thou art full of love and honesty, and weighest thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore, these stops of thine fright me the more. Oh, for such things in a false disloyal knave are tricks of custom. But in a man that's just, they are close delusions, working from the heart that passion cannot rule. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn I think that he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or those that be not, would they might seem none. Certain men should be what they seem. Why then, I think, Cassio's an honest man. Yahang, Kibina, Kibina, Ehin toki yon spewa hamia heying, as thou dost ruminate and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts. Why, say they are vile and false. As where's that palace where into foul things sometimes intrude not? Who has a breast so pure? But some uncleanly apprehensions keep leets and law days, and in session sit with meditations lawful. Thou dost conspire against thy friend Iago, if thou but think'st him wronged, and makest his ear a stranger to thy thoughts. I do beseech you, though I perchance am vicious in my guess, as I confess it is my nature's plague to spy into abuses, and oft my jealousy shapes faults that are not, that your wisdom yet, that from one that so imperfectly conceits, would take no notice, or build yourself a trouble out of his scattering and unsure observance. If it were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thoughts. Aka haya happy war. Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash to something, nothing. It was mine, tis his, and has been slain to thousands. But he that filches from my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. By heaven I'll know thy thought. You cannot, if my heart were in my hand, nor shall not, whilst is in my custody. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss, who certain of his fate loves not his wronger. But, oh, what Damned minute tells he o'er, who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Poor and content is rich and rich enough, but rich's fineness is as poor as winter to he that ever fears he shall be poor. 
Good heaven, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why? Why is this? Thinks thou I'd make a life of jealousy? To follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicion? No. To be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such exupplicate and blown surmises matching thy inference. Tis not to make me jealous, to say my wife is fair, feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Where virtue is, these are more virtuous. Nor from mine own weak merit will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt. For she had eyes and chose me. No, Iago. I'll see before I doubt, when I doubt prove. And on the proof, there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I'm glad of it. For now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Where your eye thus, not jealous, nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. Look to it. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave it undone, but keep it unknown. Does that say so? She did deceive her father marrying you, and when she seemed to shake and fear your look, she loved the most. And so she did. And why go to then? She that so young could give off such a seeming to seal her father's eyes up close as oak. Thought was witchcraft. <laughs> but I am much to blame. I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I am bound to thee forever. He did have a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot, not a jot. Oh, in faith, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love, but I do see you are moved. I am to pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not, should you do so, my lord. My speech should fall into such vile success as my thoughts aim not at. Cassio's my worthy friend. <laughs> oh, my lord, I see you are moved. No, not much moved. I do not think but Desdemona's honest. <laughs> long live she so, and long live you to think so. And yet, how nature erring from itself. Aye, there's the point. As to be bold with you, not to affect many proposed matches of her own clime, complexion, and degree, whereto we see in all things nature tends. Oh, one may smell in such a will of most rank, foul, disproportioned thoughts, unnatural. But, pardon me, I do not in position distinctly speak of her, though I fear her will recoiling to her better judgment may fall to match you with her country forms and happily repent farewell farewell if more thou dost perceive let me know more set on thy wife to observe but leave me iago oh, my lord i take my Why did I marry? This honor creature doubtless sees and knows more, much more than he unfolds. My lord, I would I might entreat your honor to scan this thing no further. Leave it a time. 
though it be fit that Cassio have his place, for sure he fills it up with great ability, yet if you please to hold him off a while, you shall by that perceive him and his means. Note, if your lady strain his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity, much will be seen in that. In the meantime, let me be thought too busy in my fears. As worthy cause I have to fear, I am. And hold her free. I do beseech your honor. Fear not my government. I once more take my leave. This fellow's of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, though that her jesses were my dear heartstrings, I'll whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. Happily, for I am rough and know not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have, or that I am declined into the vale of years, yet that's not much. She's gone. I'm abused, and my relief must be to loathe her. O oh, curse of marriage, that we may call such delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. I had rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than keep a corner of the thing I love for others' uses. Yet tis the plague of great ones. Prerogatived are they less than the base. Tis destiny unshunnable. Play death. Even then, this forked plague is fated to us when we do quicken. Desdemona comes. If she be false, oh, then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello? Your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour, it will be well. Your napkin is too little. Let it alone. Come, I'll go in with you. I'm very sorry that you are not well. Oh. I'm glad to have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she still loves the token. <laughs> For he conjured her she should ever keep it, that she reserves it ever more about her to kiss and talk to. I'll have the work taken out. And... Give it Tiago. What he will do with it, heaven knows. Not I. I'm nothing but to please his fantasy. How now? What do you here alone? Do not you chide. I have a thing for you. A thing for me? It is a common thing. Ha! To have a foolish wife. Oh, is that all? Hm. What will you give me now for the same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that moor first gave Desdemona that you so often did bid me steal. Hast stolen it from her? No faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage, I being here, took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. Give it me. What will you do with it that you have been so earnest to have me flinch it? Why? What's it to you? If it not be for some purpose of import, give me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad if she shall lack it. Be not ignorant on it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. Hmm. <laughs> I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proof of holy writ, this may do something. The more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their natures. 
poisons. Which of the first are scarce found to distaste, but with a little act upon the blood burn like mines of sulfur? I did say so, look where he comes. Not poppy, nor mandragora, nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou owest yesterday. Ha ha! False to me! By how now, General? No more of that. Avaunt! Be gone! Thou hast set me on the rack! I swear tis better to be much abused than but to know it a little. How now, my lord? What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, it harmed me not. I slept the next night well, was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him know it not, and he's not robbed at all. I am sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted of her sweet body, so I had nothing known. Oh, now, forever, farewell the tranquil mind, farewell content, farewell the plumed troop and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Ah, oh, farewell! Farewell the neighing steed and the shrill trump, the spirit-stirring drum, the ear-piercing fife, the royal banner, and all quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. Oh, you mortal engines whose rude throats the immortal Jove's dead clamors counterfeit. Farewell, a fellow's occupation's gone. Is it possible, my lord? Villain, be sure thou prove my love a whore. Be sure of it. Give me ocular proof, or by the worth of man's eternal soul, thou hadst better have been born a dog than answer my wicked wrath. Is it come to this? Make me to see it, or at the least prove it that the probation bear no hinge nor loop to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life. My noble lord, if thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more, abandon all remorse. On horror's head, horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep, all earth amazed. For nothing canst thou to damnation add greater than this. O oh, grace, O oh, heaven, forgive me. Are you a man? Have you a soul or sense? God be with you. Take mine office, O oh, wretched fool, that livest to make thine honesty a vice. O oh, monstrous world, take note, take note. O oh, world, to be direct and honest is not safe. I thank you for this profit, and from hence I'll love no friend, except love breeds such offense. Nay, stay, thou shouldst be honest. I should be wise, for honesty is a fool, and loses that it works for. By the world, I think my wife be honest, and thinks she is not. I think that thou art just, and think thou art not. I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now grimed and black as mine own face. <laughs> if there be cords or knives, poison or fire or suffocating streams, I'll not endure it. Would I were satisfied? I see, sir, you are eating up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. You would be satisfied? Would? Nay, I will. Nay, nay but now. How, how satisfied, my lord, would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on? Behold her topped. Death and damnation! Oh! There were a tedious difficulty, I think, to bring them to that prospect. Damn them, then, if ever mortal eyes do see them bolster more than their own. What then? How then? What shall I say with satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this 
Were they as prime as goats, as hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride, and fools as gross as ignorance made drunk? But yet, I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you may have it. Give me a living reason she's disloyal. I do not like the office. But, sith I am entered in this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, would he gripe and wring my hand, cry, Oh, sweet creature, and then kiss me hard, as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, and then laid his leg over my thigh and sighed, and kissed, and then cried, Cursed fate that gave thee to the wall. Oh, monstrous! Nay, this was but his dream. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt, but though it be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her all to pieces. Nay, but be wise. Yet we see nothing done, she may yet be honest. Tell me but this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one was my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief. I am sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? If it be that. Uh... If it be that, or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh, that the slave had 40,000 lives! One is too poor, too weak from my revenge! Now do I see tis true. <laughs> Look here, Iago. All my fond love, thus do I blow up to heaven. Tis gone. Arise, black vengeance! From thy hollow cell, yield up, O love, thy crown and heart to throne to tyrannous hate. Swell bosom with thy fraught, for tis of aspics tongues. Yet be content, O blood, blood, blood. Patience, I say. Your mind perhaps may change. Never, Iago, like to the Pontic Sea, whose icy current and compulsive course never feels retiring ebb, but keeps due on to the Propontic and the Hellspont. Even so, my bloody thoughts with violent pace shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love till that a capable and wide revenge swallow them up. Now, by yond marble heaven, in the due reverence of a sacred vow, I here engage my words. Do not rise yet. Witness, you ever burning lights above, you elements, that clip us round about witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, 
two wronged Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse. What bloody business ever. I greet thy love, not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous, and will upon the instant put thee to it within these three days. Let me hear thee say that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. But let her live. <laughs> Damn her lewd minx! Oh, damn her! Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now, art thou my lieutenant. I am your own forever. <laughs>